Now that we know about Latin vowels and consonants, we can apply that knowledge to determine syllable quantity, also known as syllable weight or length. This is the culmination of our previous learning and the key to understanding Latin meter. Latin syllables are considered either long or short. For example, in the word saipe, the first syllable is long and the second is short. In theory, a long syllable takes about twice as long to pronounce as a short syllable, but this is a very rough estimate. When noting syllable quantity, we use the macron to mark long syllables and the breve to mark short syllables. You have already seen the macron as a mark for long vowels. There are two main reasons that a syllable is long. The first is simple. It has a long vowel sound, that is, a long vowel or diphthong. These syllables are called long by nature because the vowel makes them naturally and always long. The second reason is slightly more complex. A syllable is also long if it ends with a consonant and the next syllable begins with a consonant. Consonants take longer to pronounce and so lengthen the syllable. Consider the time it takes to pronounce inert compared to the time it takes to pronounce insert. The first word has a noticeably shorter first syllable because of the consonants. The same holds true in Latin. The first syllable of ferro takes less time to say than the first syllable of fertur. As we have seen, when several consonants follow a vowel, they are generally split between the syllables. When this occurs, as in the word coptus, the first syllable is called closed because it ends in a consonant. Closed syllables in Latin are generally long. They are called long by position because their length comes from the surrounding consonants rather than the vowel. Syllables that are long by position can have either long or short vowels. For example, the A in coptus is short, a, but as we have seen, the first syllable is long because it ends in a consonant and the next syllable begins with one, coptus. An example of a closed syllable with a long vowel is monsit, which splits as mon sit. Note that this does not make the syllable extra long, it is still just long. Mon sit. Now let's move on to short syllables. Syllables that have a short vowel sound and are open, that is, do not end in a consonant, are short. For example, the first syllable in erat, erat, or the second syllable in incipit, in kipit. To review, syllables can either be long or short. If a syllable is long, it can be long by nature or long by position. Long by nature refers to the fact that the syllable contains a long vowel sound, a long vowel or a diphthong. Long by position refers to the fact that the syllable is closed, that is, it ends in a consonant, and the next syllable begins with a consonant. The simple rule here is that if a vowel is separated from the next vowel by two or more consonants, the syllable containing that vowel is long by position because the consonants split. If neither of these cases applies, the syllable is short. Now that we've covered the basic ways to determine syllable length, there are a couple of cases that deserve a special consideration. First, as you may remember from the previous video, some consonant clusters tend not to separate, especially if they involve a stop and a liquid, L or R. For example, pa tres is the common syllabification, not pa tres, although sometimes poets will ignore this rule for the sake of the meter. Applying what we've just learned, this division makes pa short and tres long by nature, since the e is long. The second is that prefixes tend to be self-contained syllables. Ab esse, for example, is a compound of ab and esse. And although standard syllable rules would lead to a, bes, se being the division, the ab likes to stay intact. So the word is actually divided as follows, ab, s, se. This means that there are some closed syllables that are actually short because the next syllable does not begin with a consonant. These will generally be prefixes. Finally, pronunciation and syllabification carry across words. 
After all, we do not speak each word completely separately. To illustrate, consider the word Kaisar. Using what we've learned, we know that Kaisar should divide like this. Kaisar. The first syllable is long by nature. The quantity of the second syllable is actually dependent on the word that follows. If I add the word fuit to the line, it would break like this. Kai sar fu it. And sar would be long by position, because the next syllable, fu, begins with a consonant. If, however, the second word were erat, something odd happens. Kai sar erat actually divides differently. Kai sar erat. Now the syllable following kai becomes short. As a result, you will have to look to the following word to help determine whether a syllable is long, as in kaisar fuet, or short, as in kaisar erat. With this, we can conclude our discussion of Latin syllables. Again, all sorts of odd things can happen in both prose and poetry, but we have covered all the basic material about Latin syllables. This will permit us to examine the meter of Latin poetry with competence and precision.